Hello folks, it's me, Tabo, and welcome to another episode of Coding for Superheroes. It's been a while since my last tutorial, but I've been busy behind the scenes, so just to reassure you, I haven't been sleeping on the job. So this video is inspired by a tutorial that I created a while ago about projectiles. I wanted to take it to the next level, so I went fishing for inspiration and stumbled upon a game that I used to play when I was a kid, Battle City. I used to enjoy playing this in my old Nintendo system. Seeing this game brought back a lot of memories, so I thought why not pay tribute by creating something similar in 3D. And that's how this whole journey began. Throughout this video I'll be taking you through the evolution of the code, starting with my usual rough approach and progressing to a more refined piece of code. Looking back at the last example, I had a cube which was rotating and firing projectiles. My first objective is to create movement so that player object can fire projectiles while still moving and making sure that the spawn position is based on the position of the player object. So I started coding the player object to respond to the WASD key inputs for its movement and the mouse for firing projectiles. Cool. Now that that is working, I want to make sure that when I click fire, the projectiles continue moving until their maximum last span is reached. Okay. Now that my two main objectives have been reached, I'm going to step away from VS Code for a while and revisit the 3JS editor. The last time I created a tutorial teaching the basics of how to use the 3JS editor, so this time I want to do a little bit more with it. Instead of using the cube to represent my player object, I'm going to build myself a tank, using basic shapes with rotation, translation and scaling. I'm going to build a simple tank. The 3JS editor is very useful if you're not used to using any 3D software like Blender or Maya, but for someone who's used to more sophisticated 3D software, it can be a little bit tedious since it is lacking most of the basic functionality that you would find in a professional 3D software. Things like multiple object selection would go a long way in speeding this whole process up, and some handy short keys would also do. Enough with complaining already. In the end, this handy tool does manage to get the job done, it definitely beats having to do everything in code. After finishing the modeling process, I exported the object as a JSON file and then loaded it into the scene using the object loader. From the top view, this is what our tank looks like and since the player object has evolved to a more complex 3D model, so has the code. As a result, I had to modify the code from what it was when I was only using a cube and refined it by taking an object-oriented approach. In the process, I did a few tests for collisions. As you can see, when the projectile hits the rotating cube, it is immediately removed from the scene. Now that the basic functionality of the player object is done, I'll go back to the 3JS editor and model some more objects for our environment. I decided to go with the forest environment. This was a rather long process, so be grateful that you didn't have to watch it all in real time. Towards the end, I did kind of cheat by using Blender for a few other things like renaming multiple objects and stuff, but nothing else, I swear. After all that arduous labor, this is what I finally ended up with. I must say, as good as it sounds, to be finished that is, there's still much to be done. Managing collisions is the next big challenge and in the next episode, I will be exploring a couple of options and seeing which one is best for the job. So until that, my fellow coding superheroes, I'll leave you by saying love and peace, I'm out.